company as well, uh, Heart, um, Northwest Harmonic Egg, and we are always so grateful to have her with us. Let's give a warm welcome to Nicole Worth. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, Thank for the you. interview. Yeah, so I, I do love to check into the chat. So if you guys do, um, as you're popping in, um, if you have any questions that are specific that might come up while I'm lecturing, um, I really wanna try to answer your questions. Um, I'm not really a lecturer, as Elizabeth said, I really am a body worker, um, but I just know that there's a lot of misinformation about the lymphatic system, or it's just not really covered by lymph people. It's uh, an RN or a doctor. And, um, and in fact, doctors actually only study the lymph system less than an hour in a four-year degree. So. I'm here to just try to field out any answers for any of your questions. I'm curious always why you're here, uh, why you decided to come and listen to this chat on the lymphatic system. Um, and I, I think in the blurb, it talked about viruses, but really we're gonna touch on a lot of different things and a lot of basics about the lymph system so that we're kind of all on the same page. Um, so a little bit about me, um, I am a massage therapist. Um, I'm 44 and um, I've lived out of the country, went to college, did a few things before I became a massage therapist. And um, I got my degree in 2000. So um, it's kind of hard to believe that it's been a couple decades um, and definitely have evolved through that process. Um, through my own healing journey is kind of why I got started with massage. And, um, and uh, it's been 12 years now that I've been focusing on our water systems. So we have our lymphatic system, our craniosacral system, um, and then of course our cardiovascular system. And those are all really high percentages of, should be highly percentages of water. Um, and we know that water holds messages. So when I'm working on people, um, I, I can feel into a lot of their stories and a lot of what's happened in their body, a lot of repetitive motions, all of those muscle memories, that's all stored in the water. Um, so if you've had any injuries or anything happen to your body, it's likely that it's those beliefs or those patterns are actually in the water. Um, so I love um, lymphatic work for that reason, because it's one of the sort of missed healing protocols, um, I think, in um, healing work um, is addressing all of those messages. Um, so it's been, like Elizabeth said, it's been four years um, that I've been doing um, harmonic egg work. Um, I have a little bit of that on my website um, and a YouTube channel where I have a few little, it sounds so trendy, but I'm not really trendy, but um, I do have a little bit of information there on a YouTube channel. Um, and I do plan to like add more in there. It's such a hot word right now to talk about the lymphatic system. Um, and again, I feel like there's not enough um, people that specialize in the lymphatic system actually getting out of their little body working rooms and, and kind of doing things in these formats. Um, so uh, I think also nowadays um, in this day and age, um, we really need to move beyond just doing body work and we really need to sort of incorporate more frequency and um, vibrations that are a higher uh, healing energy um, and incorporating that more in body work. Um, so that we can have that frequency to counteract things going on in the body. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, so I am the Harmonic Egg Center. Um, I have a little bit of a visual. This is mostly just to keep, you know, keep me kind of on track. Um, but uh, again, my name is Nicole. This is my email. If you have any other questions that come out um, after the chat, you can email me. Um, and then these are my two websites that are linked together, NicoleWareth.com and um, HarmonicAgeNorthwestCenter.com. Um, and so sometimes when I get started on talking about body work, um, I just kind of keep going. So I wanna make sure that I let all of you guys know that for attending the chat today, it's 10% off. After the intro, I do discounts for um, clients that are new to coming in. Um, and I do 10% off any of the programs. Um, I think actually what I wanna also, I kind of skipped over is why I got into lymphatic work. Um, I actually had been looking for, um, I had heard, I had actually um, been quite uh, heavy. I was about 75 pounds more, which is kind of hard to imagine even now. Um, but I was size 16 and I really was struggling with my weight. 
and um, stress, of course, was really high, and that's a factor. Um, but my portions were big, and so I started looking at different things, um, and I very quickly found that I didn't really want to count calories. I didn't want to have all that information, and so I discovered that lymph was an amazing tool for weight loss, um, and so I actually was able to, it took a couple of years, but actually be able to get back to my normal body weight, and um, I found that was so amazing and incredible, and um, again, that was over 12 years ago. Um, that I sort of discovered that. And that's when I started specializing in water messaging and found that our emotional health and our lymphatic system were all sort of linked to our immune system. And so you'll hear me talk a lot about emotions. We're gonna uh, open up here a little bit with um, uh, body working beliefs. So, um, so our, my main body working beliefs, this is so important to make sure that we're on the same page when we go to talk about the lymph system, because um, some people haven't had body work before, or they've actually, um, when I've lectured before and, they, and clients end up coming in, they end up telling me that they didn't like massage and they didn't want to get a massage, but then they heard that lymph was very gentle and that it actually um, counteract pain receptors. Uh, cell receptor sites in the body, and that it would actually be a type of touch that they could do. Um, and I, I see that all the time, actually, in my practice. So, um, so yeah, body working beliefs. So our bodies do store everything. I think of our subconscious a little bit like the on a ladder, like an old school ladder um, that would slide along like a bookshelf. And the books on the shelf are all the stories in our body and our subconscious, which dictates, they say, 80% of what we do, which starts very, very young. Our beliefs are really cemented when we're very young. Um, and so that subconscious um, will kind of slide along there when we're nice and relaxed. So key is that we have to be nice and relaxed, right? Be sleeping really good. But it will pull off this book and it will flip through the stories. And that's where when we're nice and relaxed in body working sessions, when those stories will start to come up, when we'll start to make connections, we'll actually just naturally start to, because um, we actually have an innate ability to sort of care for ourselves, really take care of ourselves. And um, we sort of lose that if we're kind of go, 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 right? Um, and so when we do lymphatic work, that's, that's a component of um, sort of an impact of this type of uh, therapy is um, we actually start to find our purpose. We actually start to figure out what we want to do next. And I love that. Um, and that's part of storing everything and making those connections. Um, so there's so many facts on hearts and how um, heart transplants and how those hold memories. And, you know, um, this person uh, passes away and does like a heart transplant for this person. And now this person's, you know, um, craving Snickers bars. And it was the heart came from a seven year old kid. There's so much if you do a little bit of research about that. So this is real science, um, but it's actually something that I have come across um, in my in my practice. So our part really in all of that is we we can't intellectualize our way through all of that. We actually again, we, we deeply relax. We allow this high frequency energy to go in when I'm doing the lymphatic work and it just moves things around. And so our job is really just to show up. And um, I find that we can travel through a lot of things ourselves, but then when someone's witnessing it, like if we were to think about our stories and share them with people, when we start to share them with people, there's something different that actually comes up. There's some other type of release um, through this telling of a story. Um, when, we, when we talk about emotional release, a lot of times people think crying, um, but just telling a story is an emotional release. And so what I find when I'm working on people is that there's a loop that's happening in the lymphatic system as I'm working on them. And then I will ask them, certain questions will come to mind and I will ask them questions like, um, you know, specific to what's happening in the body and, um, and then they'll tell me, uh, oh, you know, I was kind of just thinking about this thing and I'm trying to work on this problem. So it's very linked to, again, how we think. And our job is just to acknowledge, release, and replace. Um, so when we think about cleansing and we think about like moving through and showing up, it's really the lymphatic system is very much about integrating nutrition, um, not just detox. So again, we, we, healing requires a witness, somebody else there to sort of help guide us through that, to have us listen to the story, have you tell the story. 
um, but not a talk therapy type of uh, situation. I'm not a talk therapist. Um, I'm a body worker. So it's about pulling out that messaging out of the tissues and, and basically telling it one more time when the body's getting rid of it. So it's very interesting how this can work and be a, such a deep um, cleansing, um, but again, pulling in nutrition in, and replacing these stories. Um, and so again, I think what happens to a lot in lymphatic work is people come in because the lymphatic system is breaking down or it's falling apart in some way. Um, and they're looking for some assistance on that. And so they forgot somewhere along the way that the body is actually not fighting uh, with them, that actually we need to be friends with our body and that it is very powerful, that it just has limitations and maybe it's reached a point of a limitation. In fact, um, last week, cause I do run a small private practice. Um, I also find that to be true sometimes when people lecture, they no longer practice. I am still have a, a small but thriving um, lymphatic practice. And I have this client come in and he's been having migraines extremely bad. And um, when I was talking to him about how did he feel after this session, and I think it was his third session, and I was like, how, how has it been going? And he's like, well, you know, and you could just tell he doesn't want to check in with his body. It's been an enemy in some way to him. And so um, part of body work and doing this sort of gentle technique of the lymphatic work is actually it will open up the person to feel good in their body and um, make friends with their body and realize that actually the healing components are in connection in that body. Um, so amazing. Um, lymph work can be, again, an amazing life hack. So I saw a couple of messages coming in. Hopefully Elizabeth will let me know if any questions pop up. Um, so body work, as you can tell, I'm totally sold on, right? That is what I do for a living. Um, I think it's so important. So let's dive in now that we all have sort of that basic understanding of body work and how it can be related into all of these ways. Let's talk about the lymph system specifically. So the lymphatic system, the main actions of the body are three main actions. There's blood, immune system, which we've talked a lot about already, um, and also our nervous system, which we've talked a lot about. So our blood is uh, activates the lymphatic function and it indirectly stimulates the circulation of the body. Now, I've even in the last just maybe few years have stopped saying as much the word circulation and really have started to um, talk more about how it's actually a transportation of the lymphatic system is a, it's a portal, it's these tunnels. And so um, again, if the blood is really thick or um, the lymphatic system's really thick or in between the cells, which we're gonna talk about anatomy here in a second, but if it's stuck somewhere in there and it's not moving very well, again, transportation of hormones, um, you know, the brain is sending out signals to the ovaries, but it just can't even get there. So um, space is definitely needed and it is these tunnels that are everywhere in the body that really, they do stimulate that circulation, but it's really about a transportation. So we're going to talk about the, so this is a quick overview of the actions of the lymphatic system. And so we're going to talk about lymph specifically, um, that there is no pump, um, is what you'll hear uh, even myself say sometimes, but there is actually something, I'm going to give you a little secret, and it's called lymph angions. And so what we have is we have these the heart is pumping and it's dumping and it leaks actually quite often out through whatever it means it needs to. It has these little openings all through the arteries. And so it'll leak and veins and it will leak um, out into the interstitial space or in between the cells. And then at 10% volume, the lymphatic system at these capillary exchanges, the lymph system should be opening up these um, anchoring filaments uh, and obviously a vacuum is going to be needed to um, the deeper limbs. And then the superficial limbs are going to open and it's going to take in about 10% of that interstitial fluid. And that is our lymph system. And that's how it gets in there is through that stimulation. So even though the heart might be pumping and we're doing so, a lot of exercise for an example, and we're doing some cardio, a lot of times people will say that the lymph system is moving from the cardio, but 
in many situations, it's really been stuck. And that's really only the deeper lymphatic systems. And it's not addressing the 60 to 70 percent of the lymphatic system, which is on the superficial lymph. And that's what we're talking about is just one aspect of the lymphatic system is these anchoring filaments along the skin. Now, what I find in my practice is that a lot of times they're broken. So people will go and get something called a deep tissue massage, or they'll do, uh, they'll carry a lot of bags all the time. I have a lawyer that does that. And um, she carries all these bags in and out. And I'm like, can you just take trips? Because it's actually breaking all of the um, anchoring filaments. And then that 60 to 70% of the lymphatic fluid that should be able to get into these anchoring filaments, it just, it, even if there is a vacuum, it just can't get in there because they're broken. And that's the entry point for this aspect of the lymphatic system. There's a few different entry points. Um, and so these anchoring filaments, um, we also have um, uh, through the brain draining, there's a few entry points uh, through there that I'm gonna go over. And then we also have something called motor complexes and those are entry points into the lymphatic system, which is in our gut. Um, and they actually link to um, other run alongside and are next to the pyre patches, if you've heard that word. Um, those are where the white blood cell counts are created and um, white blood cells. And those are created there in there. And all of that happening, all that activity within the lymphatic system is in connection to what's happening in the brain. So there's this gut brain connection in the lymphatic system. So one of the ways that I do work with clients is they've um, had different diagnoses within their digestive tract. And then they come in and work with me and we actually clean up the inflammation or the issue going on there. We repair skin um, issues going on there. Um, but we connect it to the brain and we start brain, draining the brain properly, um, which is what we're going to talk about here in a second. Um, and we get that so that way then they aren't just eliminating things out of their diet and then adding them back in and then still having, a, you know, those B cells are still being triggered, all those antigens, um, because it, it didn't involve the motor complexes and the connection to the lymphs in the brain. So there is this huge connection through all of the lymphatic system. I see a question coming in. Let's see here. Um, actually, a couple comments. Um, oh, thanks, Veronica. You're so sweet. Um, if an individual has a low white blood cell count, can this be remedied? So it's a great question. I'm not a doctor, so I'm going to give you my layman's terms from a body working perspective. So. Um, and actually, let me look at it really quick again. Yeah, so if an individual has a low blood cell count, can this be remedied? So whenever you come in for lymphatic work, which we're actually almost getting there, um, and I'll just kind of jump there right now to answer your question. I'm gonna give you some more information, uh, Ashley, and you let me know if this answers your question. So when we go, so we do have lymph all over, and um, we have about one to three liters is what we should be actually um, moving. If we 1.5 um, to three liters, we should be having every single day if our lymphatic system is healthy. So remember we had the heart pumping and it would be kind of dumping into this interstitial space. And then only 10% of that is actually getting picked up. Um, so the one to three liters, if it's healthy is actually picking up that 60 to 70%, you know, we actually have double the amount of lymph fluid that we do blood, but it still only picks up about one to three liters and it's screening and cleaning that. Um, now, when we go for body work, when we go for just hands-on lymphatic work, very gentle around the collarbone, it's so important that you go to a therapist that is addressing the collarbone. That's also a super common, uh, Thing that happened, complaint that happens when I talk to people is they've gone for lymphatic work and they're getting all this work where they had surgery or different things and they're not getting this drains, which is the major drains. We need to address that first. You're not going to someone who knows what they're doing if they're not working on the collarbones or they're only doing it for a few minutes and then they're not, you know, and then they're working on other parts of the body. So when you go for, again, manual lymphatic drainage, MLD, with someone's hands working on you, almost like a 
like a massage where you're getting undressed on the table and they're using their hands, you can move that person, if they're good, can move up to 30 liters in 40 minutes. So again, one to three every day, but in 40 minutes, it can move a month's worth supply of lymphatic fluid and that's if it's healthy. So if it hasn't been healthy, any amount would be amazing for that lymphatic system. And of course the cardiovascular system. And then remember it's a portal system. So we're talking about hormone support and all of that. Now with me, I, again, I like to use frequency. I like to add in other components and not just work with the lymphatic system with my hands um, so that we can really add ionic energy. And I'm gonna go into that a little bit about my machine. Um, I have four different ones. We're going to talk about a couple different ones, um, hopefully today. Um, but I can move 12 times more than manual because we're not just manually moving it. We're actually adding in ions to clean up the blood supply. So remember I said the heart is pumping and then it leaks. Well, it leaks when it's sticky or different um, cells that are you know, non-nutritional red blood cells are kind of going through and they can't get the cell receptors are so gummy and the body, it's so amazing that our body will know that it can't quite get the calcium it needs or it can't quite get that these cell receptor sites are all gummy and they need to be cleaned and it will leak out of the cardiovascular system, go into the interstitial space. And then again, if the lymphatic system is healthy, it'll take in that cell and it will clean it just for a few chains through the nodes. And as soon as it's clean, it'll exit actually the lymphatic system through the nodes only, because lymph is a one-way system, but it will exit through the lymph system, the nodes, and it will return back to the cardiovascular system and go on its way, whatever the duty is that it needs to do. Um, so this is really important that we be cleaning up the cardiovascular system so it's no longer needing to dump into the interstitial space and then no longer needing to have to even go into the lymphatic system. Or, of course, all the energy is hitting the lymphatic system that it will actually be cleaning up the lymph system as well. And maybe it doesn't have to stay as long in the lymph system. And this is important when these non-nutritional proteins, they, in red blood cells, when they exit and they leak and they go to get clean, they actually exit and can cause like a lot of issues because two water molecules have to follow that protein. So what we can have is some swelling in between the cells because it's not getting into the lymph system, there's either anchoring filaments, remember, are broken, or there's different things that can be going on there, and not anything to do with an infection. Maybe I should plug that in there really quick. A lot of times people will feel things and they'll be like, oh, it's so swollen, and they'll start to get so worried that it's an infection. There are many reasons why something might swell. And this is why, again, you know, a doctor maybe might prescribe something and, and honestly, you just need to go to the lymphatic therapist who knows what they're doing to kind of take a look at what's going on there. Um, so uh, definitely if you feel like it's an infection, of course, go to your doctor, uh, outrule something, but then of course your lymphatic therapist can help you with that. So again, um, using frequency can really clean up a lot of things and move 12 times more than manual. Um, so let me pop back over here. Yeah, so that's the, what I want to answer is that as we're moving all that fluid, whether it's the 30 liters from the manual lymphatic drainage session, or it's 12 times more, right, using different machines, um, then, you know, it actually will stimulate the white blood cell counts to actually go up. There's like these little sensors in the lymph nodes that sense that the fluid is coming in. And I kind of like a lot of analogies to explain things, stories. So um, I kind of think of it as like, you know, a bouncer at a club or something like that, where they actually will kind of start to check IDs, right? Um, dendritic cells or macrophages that are inactive. They'll be hanging out at these different sections of the lymphatic system or around lymph nodes. And they're sort of checking all of the cells that are coming in. And they're like, wow, there's so many cells coming in. We need more soldiers and it will start to stimulate um, the body and a natural immune response to have more soldiers through the immune system. So the prior patches are going to start to go to work, producing more white blood cells, um, more soldiers, so that they can be sent out to find out what's happening. 
it, you know, if there's anything kind of going down the pike. And this is also something that I can sense when I'm working on people. Amazingly, I'm so uh, impressed actually that it's taken some time, but to figure this out that when I'm working on people, I can tell if they have really a lot of white blood cells, that something active is going on, or do they have a lot of B cells? Um, do they have a lot of active T cells that are just overactive? Are they doing, you know, maybe lots of vitamin C and they're just, these T cells are going crazy, eating up all of the um, metabolic waste. It doesn't even have to be environmental and it's producing all this byproduct and busyness for the lymph system. And maybe they need to actually, which sounds funny, but I often mention that because it just sounds interesting. Like wouldn't vitamin, extra vitamin C be good? but it can actually be really running the immune system down if, if it doesn't have the right support. So definitely a low count, um, but that will be short lived. So while you're getting the lymphatic work, the a white blood cell counts will go up, but then um, they'll start to come back down again. There's something else going on in your lymphatic system and those things usually will get found out uh, with a couple sessions. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, Ashley. So the anatomy of the lymph system, again, is we have these pre-collectors, right? These um, anchoring filaments that are opening, and then we have these little um, uh, capillaries that kind of are called pre-collectors. They're very, very tiny. It's almost like, I want you to think of almost like a table that you pour water on and it just kind of moves. There's really no, it's sort of a-directional and kind of unorganized. And it's just really the beginning part of getting um, into the lymphatic system. But then we have collectors, which are a little bit more organized. And then it just gets more and more specific and it gets into these vessels. So we have these nodes with chains of vessels attached to more nodes. And then we have a collection of nodes and vessels, right? Um, and then we have divisions. Our lymph system, even though there's this great connection between fluid volume, right? So if we have swelling over here and I start draining the head, I might actually feel how the head draining might be related to a knee injury. And I'll feel that connection, that water balance connection. And there's that type of communication happening when there's an imbalance. But when lymph system is in balance, there's actually not a communication happening between one side and another. So that means that that system has been damaged in some way. Um, so again, we have all these divisions and sections. And so any type of surgery that we've had or any kind of cut, like the most common one I see is a C-section or a mommy makeover augmentation. These are cuts into the lymphatic system that actually are going to dismantle the drainage system and, and, and cause some issues within that imbalance there. Um, and so that's where we're gonna start to see more communication between parts, which is not what we want. We want everything to be individual and separate and self-sustaining and you know able to clean everything. Okay, so we talked about nodes. And then we also have something called a thoracic duct. And that's another part. And then we have lymphoid tissues and there's lots more we could cover there. But that's the basic part of the lymphatic system is that it, I want you to think of it as almost everywhere. Um, and draining and bringing in nutrition and um, all those three major functions that we talked about working with the blood and filtration. Um, but I want you to think of it as portals. Um, almost like a transportation. So something I see also a lot in my practice is um, I have a lot of people that refer people to me, um, nurses and doctors. And I had a nurse, uh, I think this was a year ago, and um, she had been referring people to me um, for lymphatic issues and um, that had a lymphatic issues for lymphatic work. And she said on my table, I was going to send you someone that had cancer, but then I figured I wouldn't want you to spread it. And that's a huge myth. Um, that cancer is actually the only way that that will exit through it, the body is out through the lymphatic system. So I always like to point that out. So okay. again, oh, um, yeah. We have a question. Um, is bad cellulite a sign of poor um, uh, lymph drainage? Oh, okay. Yeah, so cellulite can actually be um, uh, definitely a sign of lymphatic drainage that's poor. Um, but that wouldn't always be the only tool that you need to sort of get cellulite to be better. 
um, nutrition is going to be another aspect of it. And you're welcome, Ashley. I'm so glad that answered your question. So absorption of nutrition um, is going to play into that um, with the cellulite. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. What'd you say? Oh, I said beautiful. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah. So all substances transported by lymph pass through at least one lymph node. Remember we were talking about how that dirty red blood cell that needed to get clean that leaked out through the cardiovascular system kind of went through a couple lymph nodes, those two water molecules following that one protein. Um, and that's where we want to get the body knows that it wants to get that clean so that it can get that water back into real circulation, right? So it transports it through and cleans it as much as it can until it's clean. And then when it's clean and determined that it is, it'll exit through one of the lymph nodes. So it really only has to pass through at least one before it can actually exit. Um, I remember before I got into and specializing in lymph, I kind of thought it was just a one-way system. It's just all the way in the lymph system forever. And that would be, uh, that would not be good. Um, we want it to return back to circulation in the bloodstream. And we want it to return when it's been filtered. So we have a lot of content still to go over. I hope we're doing okay on time um, and, and keep the questions coming. So, so we have another way into our lymph system. So we talked about anchoring filaments a little bit. We talked about motor complexes and how those are sections in the intestines. Um, and that we have uh, that correspond to our brain and that are in connection to that uh, lymphatically. Um, this also is where we have digestion of fats. Um, so the liver will be a big part of that, but the lymph system is directly related to that portal system of taking all of our fats. So if you've had a gallbladder removed, lymphatic work would be amazing to come in and just sort of help that system. Um, to break down those fats, take it to the liver and, and do its magic. Um, and all of that is happening um, in lacteals along the intestine. So we're kind of skipping over some of that a little bit, trying to stick to viruses as kind of our focus. Um, but they are impacted by the wall dyer's rings. So we're going to talk about that for a little bit. Um, so we have tonsils. And tonsils are impacted by the upstream. So that's going to be our brain, our sinuses. I know you're not going to be able to see this. Our teeth, ears, eyes. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. So I hope it's OK. I'm checking my notes. Scalp. And also our skull bones. So crazy, right? We don't think of this probably um, as a lymphatic thing, but we need to be in bed um, between uh, nine and 10 to make sure that we have the hormones produced the way that we need them. We need to have the craniosacral water system shrink the brain 60% so that the um, lymph system can actually drain out and it's called glymphatic system. So sometimes the location of the water will change the name of it, but basically it's your lymph system that's going to be draining out through the brain but it's also going to come through sinuses. It's going to drain all our teeth, our ears, our eyes, everything through these, this thing called the wall dyer's rings. Now, um, as that fluid is coming uh, at night where it's most active, the lymphatic system is, um, that's going to be 60%, such a high percentage, that's going to go through the wall dyer's rings. And the, the way that this was discovered actually was through a dye study. So again, these vessels, they're double, these lymphatic vessels are double blood vessels, but they're so uh, tiny, right, in, in many ways, that they're, and they're so intricate that they're actually, again, any kind of injury, it's going to be compromising the lymphatic system. Of course, it can overcome a lot. Um, but they had to put a dye in to just see where it would go. So this was done through a dye study. So the Waldorf's rings is just a fancy medical word for our adenoids, adenoids, our tonsils, the base of the tongue, actually. And um, it's really close to our vocal cords. Okay, so there are three exits out of the brain that we're going to just touch on. It's going to go into the venous 
flow. It's also going to go into our nodes, but it's also going to do our ducts. Remember, we talked about a thoracic duct that's in here. And that a lot of times people will talk about um, that it will, uh, you know, do some light breathing and that that will move the lymphatic system. Again, um, these most of the time are not lymphatic therapists. And it's true that it is very helpful to breathe um, deeply with our diaphragm, not a deep, like really big breath. Um, that's not going to move any lymph, um, but it won't move if it's not healthy um, lymphatic system, right? If it's stuck, if it's thick, if it's not watery and it's thick like honey or maple syrupy, I mean, it's, it's going to take some effort. Um, so this is, again, where lymphatic work is, is crucial. Um, so, but we are going to have it come down into the ducts. And then, um, let's see here. Oh, hey, Nicole. Um, this is a this question. Um, what would you recommend for someone who has had their tonsils or adenoids removed? Yeah, so um, lymphatic work obviously is going to be really important if you're um, missing a component of the lymphatic system. And um, let me see the question. Thank you for asking. What would you recommend for someone who has maybe so? Oh, okay. So oil pulling is a concept, right? That as you're like moving your gastric uh, juices of your saliva, that everything is. Um, that would want to eat off of that, some bad bacteria, that type of thing, will come in and get kind of stuck in the oil. Um, I definitely ascribe to uh, using oil to clean, and um, you can do that to help stimulate things in this area, but you're not going to have, you're going to miss some of the components, and so what's going to happen is 60% of the fluid that's coming out of the head and the teeth and the ears and all those areas they're gonna just pass right through. You're not gonna have as much filtration. So what I see in my practice when that, it's actually something I can feel in the body, is just that it's working a little bit harder. So the way that I like to think of this instead of, because belief is really important um, behind everything that we're, uh, that you should believe that your body can overcome these things um, that have happened to you, that you maybe were even really young and didn't even, weren't even a part of that decision. Um, so it's really important to, uh, know that everything sort of happens the way that it's supposed to, and that um, that's really key, that emotional component um, of telling your body that it can handle uh, having some of these parts taken out, um, that it can overcome it. So what I find is that um, in lymphatic work is that the lymph system is working harder in that area right before it goes back into, and Waldar's rings comes down and then it goes right into the heart. So it's a really important area. So your body recognizes that it usually has, you know, even though some of, you know, a lot of the cells are gone, not all of them will be gone. And so they'll be working on that area. So hopefully that answers your question to how you perceive this uh, part being gone. Just like um, I have several clients that have appendix uh, removed and that's a big part of their immune system. Um, your body just has to work extra uh, in other areas and it can do that. It can overcome that. It can have a production of support and soldiers. Um, and then obviously the immune system can be um, boosted by diet and other things, but belief is a big part of it and lymph would be definitely indicated. So- um, Thank you. I, yeah, you're welcome. So too, and hopefully that answered your question. Um, yeah, and I forgot, I didn't catch the name, who it was, but it looks like you had it, Marilyn, maybe. Okay, so, um, okay, so cervical ganglion is just kind of a fancy word, again, for vagus nerve. And the reason why I say again is that our craniosacral system is our water system that lines and coats the brain, and it brings nutrients to the spinal cord. And this is where a lot of uh, bad bacteria or things can hide um, from the immune system even. So this is where we need frequency. We need to have something next level so that we can do something that's sort of non-invasive, non-surgical, uh, right? We're not cutting, uh, you know, scar tissue out. We're not creating scar tissue by cutting scar tissue out kind of scenario or something. Um, we're, we're just using this water system to really clean things out. 
Um, and so that's what we can do when we're working. I can feel it actually along. I've actually felt um, different bacteria in the brain moving around. Um, and so again, I just, I target those um, with the machine. So, um, and then the, so this is 60%, right? Going into wall dryers, we've got 40 going into our lift system. Um, so just wanna make sure I cover that last piece. Okay, so we have a lot more to go over. Hopefully we're doing good on time. I can't see that. Oh, there's the time. Okay, so we talked about nodes and how they are in chains connected by vessels or portals, right? Little tunnels. And they are packed with B cells. Let's make sure I don't miss anything. And so B cells, are uh, BMT cells, they're gonna be macrophages. And that's just a fancy word for um, eating up, gobbling, right? And, um, and they will be activated by different um, things happening in the cells. There's also dendritic cells. And I'm adding this piece in um, as we're going over this, um, this is really like just to show you how intricate our immune system is and how amazing it can actually overcome a lot of viruses or things going on. And I want you to have a general sense of this. So, so we have them packed full of B cells, right? And, and those come from our uh, marrow, bone marrow, our, our schooled, I like to think, to say it that way, schooled those T cells in our thymus. And so we have different organ systems that are called lymphoid tissues, lymph right, lymphoid tissues. And they're a part of our lymphatic system um, via the immune system. So remember I said in the beginning, I really think of our emotional state, our immune system and our lymphatic system as just all the same thing, um, which is not uh, entirely accurate, but I just, I worked in enough bodies that I can feel that in the body. Um, and so again, they're packed with B cells uh, which are our antigen presenting cells. And then we have our T cells, which is just, I want you to think of like, it's funny, I'm gonna show my age because I always think of like these T cells as kind of like Pac-Man and they just, they have to be stimulated and activated to work. Um, so that's that vitamin C and different things will trigger them, um, but they'll get super active and they'll just gobble up and you know, be just bad asses and they'll just come in and they'll just take over and they're amazing. And then they'll get really tired and they'll go inactive and they have to be continually stimulated um, by environment or uh, food or different things, right? So, but these are in our nodes as well as foreign substances. So some foreign substances might be uh, bacteria, um, we also will have cancers in here. Um, it's very common and normal and totally fine to have a few AWOL cells that we need to actually start to have apoptosis with, not just necrosis, right? So we've got some different things that are being, uh, you know, T cells will come along and see some antigen presenting thing on a cell, and we're like, mm, I don't, I don't, I think that's a, I think that's foreign. I don't think that's us, and it will inject it into the cell, give it this electrical, uh, you know, it doesn't talk to it, right? It's everything is electronic. So it's all in these different um, pathways along the nerve pathways. And it will tell it to give it instructions to pack up its good stuff and recycle that and pack up the bad things and, and get rid of that waste. And if it doesn't do that, it'll just explode and be very upset and send that matter everywhere and create a problem. Um, and that's where we can get different things kind of feeling like, oh, I just kind of don't feel right here. It could be something like that, very on a small scale. Um, or it could be, um, okay, I'll recycle, you know, the amino acids that I have, the proteins that I have, and we'll reuse those. And thanks for giving me the instructions, basically. And it will actually tidy up inside the cell and pack up what it needs and get rid of its own waste. So it won't create more waste. So this is obviously the ideal situation that we have this symbiotic thing happening with the T cells interacting with these A wall cells. So I, I don't want to think you know, about, I wanna sort of insert here about all that relationship that we should be having with our body. Hopefully this doesn't fall over. 
okay, that we should be having this relationship, that it's not a fight. We need to be more of a friend with our body, more gentle and kind to our body. Um, but so we also will have dead cells. Sometimes um, I spend time talking about toxins and a lot of times people will go into environmental things, um, but it's not, it, it can be just dead cells. Um, I had a client in yesterday who um, runs a concrete business and he's very active and um, doesn't take a lot of time out for himself, runs his own business and doesn't drink a lot of water um, is another factor. Um, and he does a lot of tea. He doesn't really do a lot of water and I'm really pushing the water instead of the tea um, because there's just no space in there. And they're like on top of each other, all this metabolic cells that are dying and that becomes a toxin and a foreign sub substance that we need to get out. Um, so those are things, again, palpable, completely palpable in a lymphatic session. So we have these nodes and they're packed with B cells. They have some foreign substances. We've got some cells like bouncers at a club kind of checking things out. We've got signals happening within the nodes. Hey, we need, we've got a lot of fluid coming through here. We've got a lot of activity. I can't check everybody's IDs. Let's, let's increase our white blood cell count. So then it goes down to the intestines, right? Produce more white blood cells. We need more soldiers bone marrow gets the information, right? So all of this portal is happening. I hope you guys are getting this picture happening. That is a hub everywhere happening in our body all day long, right? So when we get the clue that we are maybe kind of doing too much and we need to sort of rest for a moment, that's where our immune cells will click on and our stress cells will click off. And that's really, really important. And this is actually when I really like to do the harmonic egg. If somebody's going, 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 we might do the lymph system work just for a little bit, just to kind of get things kind of cleaned up a little bit fast, because remember it moves 12 times more than manual, but then we kind of want them to be in the wooden chamber of the harmonic egg and just really, really, really relax, like so relaxed that they come out just like unaware where they are, which is sometimes what happens. People are like, I didn't even remember where I was when I woke up because the body is so going deep into this uh, subconscious and doing the healing, cleaning up work that it needs to every night. So if you're not sleeping every night, that's a great tool is the harmonic egg. Um, and, and that's something that I assess kind of when you first come in, we kind of talk about that. So there is within the immune system, three separate divisions. So I'm gonna to try to go over this um, in a timely manner. I haven't seen any more questions come in. Um, so we have a physical barrier, super important. I think people skip over this a lot. Um, if you have lymphedema or you have swelling, or if you just have a very active job and you get cuts a lot on your skin, this is a direct route into the bloodstream and that's a problem. Remember the blood is pumping so fast and so uh, heavy. Um, that it's just going to spread things much faster than if it gets into the lymph system and the lymph system takes its time to screen and clean and things like that. Which by the way, we do have um, an immune system actually that runs through the cardiovascular system. That's um, kind of a long story there. But I like to think of the donut analogy. Sorry, this hopefully won't fall. Um, I like to think of the donut analogy uh, when I think about this physical boundary. So think of like a donut that has a hole missing out of the center of it. That, that outside of the donut is the outside of our skin. The inside of that donut is the beginning part of going in through our first sphincter. So we do have eight sphincters. Our mouth is one sphincter. And then we actually have three at our anus, right? So I call it our chew to poo. And um, this donut, is actually shouldn't touch anything within our body other than nutrition, food, uh, you know, yeah, exactly. So you'll eat your food, right, inside of the mouth and it should just slide through almost like this big donut hole and it should slide through and be liquid and it should it make it exchanged within the intestines very easily through this, almost like a big colander, right? It should make its exchange and change into energy. We really shouldn't have uh, as many things breaking down in that donut hole because that is directly into the bloodstream. That's where we get those B cells going crazy over antigens and allergens and lots of problems there, right? 
Okay, so this physical boundary is really important. That's the first part of the immune system. It's the first thing that usually will interact with anything like a virus or anything that's not supposed to be in our body. Um, so then our innate immune system is next after that physical boundary. And this innate immune system, it's, boy, it's pre-programmed. It has set responses. It never fails or always works the same exact way. It's like the instructions are always exactly the same. Um, and I, I think of this as a football stretch tackle. It's called complement is another way to talk about it. And it kind of opens and closes. I'm going to try to put that there because it won't fall. And it kind of opens and closes like a football tackle. So these complements are little cells and they kind of come up out and then they come back and then they come out and they come back. And when they come out, if they happen to notice any kind of dust particles from, you know, cleaning out your garage this spring or something, and it's not really supposed to be in our body, then that will attach itself to that dust particle, for an example, and this other one will attach on top of that, and it will just be this football tackle, and other complements that are in the area will actually just kind of keep football tackling it. And then that's when we're like, yeah, I cleaned out the garage, and <clears throat> I, got, <clears throat> I got something in my throat. Well, that's what's happening is that complement has a pre-programmed response to just tackle things that are not meant to be there. Now, we would have a big problem if we had specific types of innate immune system in our intestines, right? We'd get plugged up intestines. So we have a different type of response happening down here with the B cells. You've probably heard of our IgM, IgG. There's all these different types of instructions that are pre-programmed to have a certain kind of response. Okay, so that's innate. And then out of that, we also have these here, okay? We have um, phagocytes, uh, granulocytes, and then we have just kind of other things, other categories here, which is our natural killer cells, our mega um, kerosinites, and then we have that complement, right? And that's gonna be kind of our other components of the innate immune system. So, um, I think what's important to point out here out of all these different cells that I think is just usable, more usable information for the every, everyday person is to talk maybe about neutrophils. So neutrophils are kind of like a bee. They, they go and they are active and then they die. They go and they're active and then they die. So we, we kind of want our immune system to be strong in a certain way to be able to have enough macrophages and enough you know, B cells and everything being active to kind of clean up after these neutrophils. Um, they are really needed. They sort of gobble up things, eat them whole, digest them, and, um, and then die. So they're kind of like our T cells where they get really active. And, um, but unlike T cells, uh, you know, these, these neutrophils, they die. So I think that's important to point out. And then also that um, a number of these cells also have dual names. So like our dendritic cells are actually, you know, they're actually can be B cells. And these are gonna be some of these cells, again, they're like these bouncers at the nodes or lymphoid tissue like thymus, spleen, to name a few. They're gonna be checking out these IDs, the ID over the cell, the uh, antigen presenting, you know, electronic codes, if you will. Um, so kind of cool. The last one that we have that's innate, all of that was innate, um, pre-programmed responses, um, which by the way, the dendritic cells, what they'll do is they'll take a snapshot of that uh, sort of weird looking cell and they'll even trap it. Sometimes they'll eat them, gobble them up um, is what they'll do. Um, and they'll eat them and then they spit them back out when they find a T cell and the T cell says, oh yeah, we need to kill that. Oh yeah, the B cells, yeah, we remember that. We had milk when we were a kid and we freaked out and now we're in our 20s. And even though the cell memory only stays in the body for a certain amount of time, there are always some B cells, they'll just go down. So like if you had an allergic reaction to milk when you were two, you know, by the time you're 20, 25, if you haven't had milk that whole time, the body's not gonna keep producing a big amount of B cells to make sure that it finds that milk's you know, issue and, and freak out over that and be able to uh, find it. 
So the dendritic cell, you know, it, it'll be less of those over the years if you had some allergen that you don't need anymore. Um, but it will still be there and it will go, oh, something's kind of funny about this. I don't remember, you know, exactly, but something's up with this and it will eat it and then present it to a B cell or a T cell and um, almost like a record of it. And then uh, that area will say, yes, those are, we need to produce more of these B cells to go after that antigen because something's happening. We're having more milk um, in our diet and that's a problem for us. So it's kind of interesting how that works, but again, those are all innate. And then the other um, is adaptive. So this one super, uh, I just get chills talking about it to be honest with you. And there's not much to say about it because um, it's, pre it's pretty learned and so specific to that person. But this is probably mostly where I work in my business um, with people is their own immune system experiences, their own stories. Uh, what they feel is a threat to them is gonna be different than somebody else. Um, so getting to know and work very closely with somebody, uh, even just a, you know, four or five times is very close and, and that's a good amount of time to sort of um, change and shift how internal drainage is. Um, but so this adaptive is learned, right? So it takes a few days. Uh, remember, I need super quick, within seconds, it's going to work. Um, adaptive, it, it will have, the innate will still come be happening for, you know, two to three days. But the indication that something deeper is going on is when it's been a few days. So you're like, yeah, I had a sore throat on Saturday. Gosh, what day is it? Man, it's Tuesday and I still have a sore throat. So innate is going to work trying to, you know, just kind of clear the lymph system of any kind of, I don't know, major kind of thing just to kind of get it out of the way. But then if it's still an issue, then the adaptive says, well, let's go, let's, what's going on here? And it will actually investigate much further. It'll remember much more. Again, it works with those B cells in different locations in the body. And it also works with those T cells. Um, and so what we're looking at is not so much something that's obvious on the outside, that something is presenting itself on the cell that's not quite right. That's going to be the immune system, but it's something that's intracellular something that's going on within the cell that's being crafty and trying to hide, right? So this is where, again, where we get to that non-surgical, non-invasive type of frequency we need to sort of be able to hit very deeply in the body um, and get it out, right? Get it neutralized. So this is where we get to the electro limb work that I mostly do. Um, again, it's non-invasive. It goes into hard to reach areas. So I work on a lot of uh, prostate health, pancreas, uh, you know, glucose, blood imbalances. Um, and basically it's this hydrostatic pressure that's created on those deeper limbs. Like we talked about, that's a, you know, exercise or whatever. This is amazing exercise without really being running the cardiovascular system. So when we have the cardiovascular working really hard, Again, it's, it's gonna stimulate the lymph system, but it's also, if it's really sticky and super stressed, it's just gonna be dumping and leaking through the cardiovascular system. And it's gonna create actually more work in the lymphatic system. So when we do the lymphatic work, it's a type of exercise that's not stimulating the cardiovascular system and instead cleaning it. But then it's also creating this vacuum, this hydrostatic pressure really deep in the very, very deep parts of the lymphatic system, ducts, organs, bones, and then it's uh, this low level current that is actually kind of uh, stimulating that vacuum so that the superficial lymph at 60 to 70% is actually starting to go into the deeper lymphs and also drain better. Screen and clean, right? So it does go eight inches. It's actually um, in the, the most recent research is up to 12 inches actually deep. So very deep and basically through a body, right? Essentially could go all the way through a body. Um, and this is where it gets fun. I almost think of what I do as like an archeologist a little bit where they send sonar into the ground and then um, they get pictures, right? Of dinosaurs or different things. So I'm sending this uh, low, low level current right, causes this hydrostatic pressure, ionic energy, into the body, and it's hitting different things, and I start to get 3D pictures. Um, emotions will be pictures um, in the head, too, as well, when I'm looking at people. 
I'll start to put together different emotions or feelings or stories or patterns. Everything is recorded in the body. Do you know that it's six gigabytes of information per each cell? So much library, remember the ladder that slides along and pulls off the books off the shelf. So many memories and things that can be connected. So it does cause molecules to repel. So what we're talking about is freeing up them. So if you do have swelling, it's gonna change the charges like super fast and we're gonna just actually see, I've seen um, within minutes, I've seen necks just like go down and then I know, wow, this person was really inflamed um, and we actually did just change the charges and get that system moving. Um, we can minimize and um, mimic uh, hormones. Um, so mimicking hormones, we can minimize that. So anything with the thyroid, again, hormones, remember it's a portal system. So we can help with that. Um, and, you know, it delivers uncountable and variable frequencies. So there's a few machines on the market um, in this local area where you actually will tap out. So anything that you're looking at, if they're like, well, we can only work on you for 20 minutes. Well, we can only work on that area for 10 minutes. We can only do 20 minutes here and then maybe 10 minutes here. That's not a machine that you want actually working on you. It's going to be countable. Your body's gonna hear that electrical language and, and identify what it is and then just ignore it. And it won't keep working with it. Um, so that's something really important to know as well. So normally I do have facial demo um, when we do these classes lot, you know, together, um, but we're doing it over Zoom. So no demo today. But um, this is actually what I most often will do, but I do have the harmonic phase, like I mentioned. Let's go back to the beginning here. and see if there's any questions about, uh, about my programs. Um, it is pretty individual, but usually I recommend a facial and definitely let me know if I have any questions I missed. It looks like maybe one. Do you have an opinion on infrared saunas like city sweats? So I do have a big opinion about that. So um, the short, I'll answer the question um, about saunas. Um, but it's going to be similar to, like I said, about the adaptive immune system, how it adapts, what sort of feels as a threat to somebody else. So whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, it's going to be related on what's happening in that lymphatic system. And that's going to be too specific to the person. Um, but in general, saunas are really good for um, uh, getting our temperature to go up, which is really good. Remember we were talking about how the um, T cells and the dendritic cells, they'll be at these lymphoid tissues and they'll be at these nodes and they're bouncers, right? And they're checking things. When they sense that so much fluid is coming through in a lymphatic session, sometimes if it doesn't, if it's really like that lymph is not watery and it's very much like honey, it's, it's gonna be like a pool, you know, uh, like a pond or a pool instead of like the ocean. And so it's gonna be very thick and muggy and the body won't be able to see what's all in there. And so just because it can't see that, it'll actually say, why don't we go ahead and just turn the thermostat up a little bit and get this kind of up a little bit higher and just kind of kill off what we don't know is there or not there. And that's what a sauna can do in terms of temperature. It can cause sort of like a low grade fever, if you will, and it can kind of kill off some things that are non-invasive, non-surgically somewhere in the body, right? So that can be really good. But when we're talking about killing off things, we still need a system that is open that can get those toxins out. Just killing a bunch of things just gives it food for other things that aren't dying. Right, so there's there can be kind of an issue with that, uh, like a timing to when it's maybe better to do it or not do it. Um, and it just depends. Not everybody falls in that category. Some people, so if you tend to be kind of more of a dry constitution, if you tend to be maybe more someone who drinks water and it kind of just feels like it goes right through your body, like this is a very lymph is indicated maybe before the sauna. Uh, before hitting it really hard, I should say. Um, but yeah, I think sweating out toxins uh, when organs are having issues. Remember we talked about the lymph being really deep in the body um, and how that drains organs. 
sometimes the organs, they, they actually work really hard and they're, they're almost like these pistons, you know, and they need, they need antifreeze to get in there and kind of cool them down, if you will. Um, and they don't have the water. You're not consuming the water and it doesn't know what to do with water when you are consuming it. Um, and so it can't cool those organs down. So then when you get in the sauna, it'll heat up, kill off things maybe that are in the organs, but it will actually cause the skin to open up and release some of these toxins and alleviate some of the organ having issues. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. It's, it's really complex to um, sort it out person by person, but hopefully that answers your question. That sometimes it can be improving it and sometimes it can actually cause a problem. Oh, and we have another question. Uh, what can we eat to improve the function, um, function of our, um, our, our sweat production? Of our sweat production? Hmm. Yes. That's a great question. Um, so water I've already mentioned, but what can we eat? I don't think I've ever had that question before. It's, it's a, great a good one. one. Yeah, it's, a, it's making me think. But um, I will say like when I'm working on people, that is like my specialty is intuition and reading into and helping them sort through like what their next step is or what they should be doing. So that's the only thing I'm thinking is I wish this person was in this room so I could give them a better answer. But um, yeah, for sweat production, I mean, you're gonna need water. It's gonna be uh, an immune, I don't really think, you know, anything red is good for the lymph system. Um, because it's high in vitamin C's and but different vitamins and minerals, but, and that, that's going to be, you're going to need nutrition to, uh, sweat. Um, yeah, I think when I think about that, you're going to, a lot of times I recommend juices, um, so that you're not doing fiber, you're doing juicing to give your body that big gulp of minerals and vitamins so that you can sweat better. Um, but again, your pathways, if they're not open, which most people, when they come in for sessions with me, um, I like to do a facial lymph is what I call it, where we work on the collarbones and the face and we work on those drains. I think of it as like a clogged drain that maybe has water very slowly seeping through. Um, that's often how lymphatic systems are. Um, instead of that 10% that they're picking up, they're, they're about three to 5%, so about half. And so um, when we do that facial lymph, we just really uh, break it up almost like a jackhammer and we just break up all that dehydration and all of that clogging, you know, metabolic waste or different things that can be there and um, open up the drainage of the whole lymphatic system. And that's 110. And then um, after that uh, facial, you can actually do several facials if you had tonsils removed or you have headaches or anything kind of going your issues anything kind of going up here above where the drains are, um, you could benefit from having maybe three to four facials um, all at 110. Um, but ultimately we wanna work physically everywhere in the body. So um, two full body sessions is the special for new people coming in um, and that's 210. So remember when you're thinking about going for a session, again, it's like 12 manual sessions. So it's definitely cost effective for this type of work. And we're not just working with our hands. Again, we're adding in frequency and vibration and um, all my intuition and emotional support as I'm following what's happening in the lymphatic system for you specifically in that adaptive immune system, right? So, um, and so in order to get to that adaptive immune system, I have to have a first appointment as a baseline. So I can kind of establish how this person uh, moves, how this person handles stress in the body. Um, when I'm moving the lymphatic system, does it see anything as a threat? Are there lots of T cells? Are there lots of B cells, et cetera? And that's kind of the baseline. And so then that second new patient assessment series is where we actually kind of see what's chronic. The body takes that first session, does a lot with it. It's like 12 sessions again. And then that second, that tells me what's going on. So I just had a client this week come in and, uh, and he was really concerned about his liver and I treated him. I did a facial and then I did his uh, first of his two new patient assessment series. And I, I was like, I don't think it's his liver that's actually needing support. It's actually the stomach. And um, so I talked to him about that. and. Um, 
it's, it's just really interesting to me. So again, we can just move, once we start opening up the lymphatic system and it starts actually have the, having the freedom to take in nutrition as well as get rid of you know, anything clogged in the system, um, that natural adaptive immune system really goes to work and works on a lot of things. And it reveals kind of what meridian lines are really plugged and what the real issues are within the body pretty, pretty quickly. So, um, so if you were to do those, again, that would be 110 for the facial and then 210 for two full body sessions. It's, it's a really, like, even if we don't work together beyond that, that is a really good boost to your body. Um, but then after that, I'm offering, again, 10% off of any of my programs that I have. So um, that's a huge savings as well. So that's kind of my assessing is really my specialty and following that fluid and um, knowing what we kind of need to do. How often do I need to see you? How many sessions do you need at that point um, to uh, clear up whatever meridian line is involved? Um, also, it's important to point out that um, I don't withhold anything. So when I'm working on those three sessions, you know, if there's an exercise that I feel like your body's telling me that you need to do to help open up your immune system, be, beyond like the obvious of hydrating and things that we've gone over today, um, of course, we go over that and I show uh, exercises and things like that to open up the lymph system. So um, it's pretty customizing. I definitely run my office different than uh, other massage practices where you might go and book an appointment and that's kind of the hour that you have with them. Um, once you get into a program, we actually have programs where we work pretty closely um, together and that might be uh, once a month that you come in or maybe I need to see you four times a, in a week. Um, so it just kind of depends on, again, that assessment and how that goes. So that's kind of the first step. Um, but hopefully that answers your question. It looks like we don't have any other questions. Hopefully um, you feel more equipped to understand your immune system today. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Nicole. And thank you everyone for being here. Always a pleasure working with you. And I, I always learn so much every single presentation and yeah. it, it gets me inspired. I think you're so sweet. Yeah, I um, definitely am passionate about water systems and working on people, but it's so, I wish there was something more I could give, like everybody do this or something, but it really is so unique to our body. Um, and yeah, and so it has to be the, the recipe or the way to heal the body is gonna be really unique. Yeah, uh, we had a couple more questions. I had my gallbladder out. Um, how will that uh, affect me as well with the lymphatic system? Yeah, so we talked a little bit about that. So the gallbladder is the storehouse, right, for fats, for the so it can give it to the liver when it's needed and that kind of thing. Um, so when we don't have that storehouse, we've got this constant drip of these fats. So what I find in my office is that, um, that it really affects the skin and um, that will affect our, that 60 to 70% of our lymphatic fluid. So I think I'd be curious what you noticed when you got it removed, what maybe some of the symptoms might be. Um, but I think in my office, what I see maybe the most common thing if I had to pick would be um, just, you know, um, uh, digestive issues, um, issues within the colon, um, and a wide variety of different issues within the colon. Um, but, but more so like just that the skin has, um, like uneven pigmentation and, um, you know, different, uh, like I'm, I'm trying to put it into words cause I, you know, I am a body worker. I'm not usually a lecturer, but, um, but I kind of think of it as like, almost like a, like a pasty feel to the lymph system. Um, and so it, it obviously is really important to, so when we, when we do the assessment and we figure out how many sessions you need to do, um, again, it's 10% off if you guys just mentioned, um, you know, this live chat, because uh, understanding a lot of this is really gonna help the body work um, be better. Um, but that, that's kind of something that we sort of figure out to help the inside drainage be better um, to manage that. Um, but yeah, so diet can be part of it to help with some of those digestive issues. Um, but a lot of times, 
when the gallbladder wasn't working so great, it was a lymphatic issue to begin with. And then now you've had surgery and, you know, it's hard to say if it's made it worse or if it's, if it was just unaffected by that. So like going back to the tonsils being removed, you know, a lot of times when I work on people, um, I'll actually have a sense like that was the best thing to do. It was, they were full of toxins and it was so important that it get removed. Um, so there's just a lot of gray um, when it comes to things that have been removed out of the body. Some, sometimes it's just really was so important to do that. So um, those are things that get kind of discussed at the appointment. Um, but, but those are some things that I see is like fatigue, you know, kind of tired and digestive issues um, for the gallbladder. Perfect. She said, yes, my skin and digestive uh, system has been all wonky and I just need to come see you. <laughs> yeah. Yay. <laughs> a few sessions probably. Yeah. And then maybe I can give you something more specific. Oh, okay. Yeah, Ashley, mm -hmm. maybe I can give you something more specific. So, um, so there's no discount on the assessment. I really spend a lot of time with people and we really kind of, you come away with really good value. So there's no discount for that. There's already kind of a discount for um, just starting to work with me. Um, the discount is for whatever I kind of recommend, whatever that's going to look like um, would be 10% off. So um, again, I'm just, I'm just me and I do everything in my business. It's just a small business here in the Pacific Northwest, um, but it is an international business. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting to talk about that. Maybe I didn't this. It's funny. I just had my lecture. I never really over plan too much. And I just kind of go with the flow. Um, but there's so much I didn't share about my own personal history. But um, but hopefully you guys felt uh, good about what you've heard today um, about the immune system. Yeah, it was fun to do the chat. Oh, well, thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. And hopefully I'll get to chat with you guys more. So yay. <laughs> well, um, I hope everyone has a wonderful sunny afternoon. Go out and enjoy the sunshine. And um, thank you so much again, Nicole. And um, uh, sending lots of lots of love and hugs to you always. And um, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks. Bye.